Episode 3, Platypus Electroreception. Before we begin, let's recap what we've learned from the previous episode. We learned that platypus breeding seasons falls between July to October. During this period, reproductive organs increase in size. Lactation typically occurs for 3 to 4 months, and milk is produced in the mammary glands. The platypus can breed to the age of 13 and have a unique set of chromosomes. In this episode, we will highlight the types of stimuli and then focus on the electroreception in the platypus. Before we begin learning about electroreception, it's important to first gain a quick understanding of the different types of stimuli and the general classifications. In this presentation, I've listed five forms, which includes mechanoreceptors, chemoreceptors, electromagnetic receptors, thermoreceptors, and pain receptors. Electroreception is defined as the biological ability that enables an organism to detect an electrical field. Given this form of stimulus, it is often used as short-range sense. This sixth sense typically occurs in fish and amphibians. However, interestingly, mammals are the only mammals which can detect low voltages and exhibit electroreception. Quick quiz, true or false, the platypus has over 40,000 electroreceptors in the bill. The answer is true. The bill is the platypus's primary sensory organ. As mentioned earlier, the bill contains over 40,000 electroreceptors distributed in rostocaudal rows, as shown in the image by the red dots, and over 60,000 uniformly distributed mechanoreceptors shown by the blue. Electroreception in the platypus is important adaptation that's used to detect prey due to its nocturnal foraging behaviour in the environment, which can also be quite turbid. The electroreceptors are sensitive to microvolts. Low voltages are produced in aquatic environments when prey contract muscles and move. Platypuses can detect voltages as low as 1.9 microvolts per centimetre from a shrimp's tail flick to a caddisfly at 14 microvolts per centimetre. The platypus detects the directionality and source of electrical stimuli through rapid side-to-side -side head movements, which enables it to compare electrical signal differences. Since electrical pulses travel faster than mechanical energy in water, this allows the platypus to determine the distance from its prey through time differences in electromechanic reception. Therefore, the synergy of mechanoreceptors and electroreceptors work together to provide the platypus with the power to create a complete three-dimensional fix on its prey underwater. We can clearly see that electroreception has the ability to reveal detailed surrounding environmental information to the platypus, given that it tends to close its eyes underwater. Q&A. Does a platypus have colour vision? Go to our blog after this video for the answer. The link is in the description below. Scientists have suggested that electroreception evolved independently, as the bill was found to be connected to the trigeminal nerve compared to in fish, which is connected to the 8th cranial nerve, which is associated with sound processing. The trigeminal sensory nuclei was thought to have emerged in the modern platypus after it diverged from the echidnas. Interestingly, further analysis of the cerebral cortex found that the electrosensory area in the platypus was contained in the tactile and somatosensory regions of the brain, indicating a close association between tactile and electrical sensors in the platypus. Want to test your knowledge? Go to our blog now and complete exercise 3 for this episode.